Hey friends, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to show you how I make Christmas dough ornaments. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to my channel. This is Joanne Barandi. I've been gone on vacation, friends, but Eric and I are back and ready to get crafting again. For today's project, you are going to need, the first thing is flour, salt, a cup of water, a measuring cup, a mixing bowl, a rolling pin, wax paper, a cutting board, a cooling rack with parchment paper, cookie cutters, and a bowl with extra flour. Okay friends, the dough recipe that I've used for 30 years includes two cups of flour, and it doesn't have to be this brand, it can be any brand. It can be the, cheap, the cheapest flour you can find, it's still gonna work. Just get two cups. Two cups of flour. One cup of salt. And it, once again, it can be any kind. A little shy there. cup of flour, I mean a cup of salt. Okay, and the cup of water. Last night I went ahead and put the tea bags in it and let it sit overnight. And it turned it brown, the water brown. So that's gonna be your basic color of your um, light brown of your cookie. This is a little trick that was shared with us by my friend Cindy with Peep This, y'all. I used to spray paint them to give them that color, and uh, she shared this tip with us on one of her videos, and I tried it, and it worked. Okay, friends, it's better to start putting your water in a little at a time, not all at once, because it may or may not, you may or may not use one whole cup. It just depends. It's kind of crazy. Start mixing it just like if you were making regular sugar cookies or pie dough or tortilla dough. And in case you don't have enough water, you can add just a tiny bit. See how it's looking? If you get too much water in here and it, uh, it tends to get sticky and it takes it a while to get firm. So you don't want, you don't want to do that. Okay, it's starting to feel pretty good. to mix it really good.
See how it's starting to look like it's almost ready to be rolled out. Knead it first. I don't think I'm gonna put any more water in it. I think I'm, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna tear off a piece of this um, wax paper to put over my cutting board. And I'm gonna sprinkle it with this extra flour here. Take this out, put that away. Takes a little work, but the reason I put the wax paper is because I didn't want it to stick to the cutting board, but I can tell now it's not going to. So here we go. I bet you didn't know it was this much work. <laughs> I, I had an idea. Sometimes it, it, it goes real fast and sometimes it doesn't. It just all depends. Actually, it does better when you get the cheaper flour. The great value from Walmart works really, really good. Okay, after I've done that, I'm gonna let it sit for a while. I'm going to put it back in this bowl and I'm going to let it sit for a while. And I'm going to let it get firm for about 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, friends, we've let our dough set and firm for about 10 to 15 minutes. Now, the next step is I roll them into, I mean, I just grab a chunk and I roll it up like, like so. Put it in the flour, and that's what I do to all of it. Make them into like little patties. I can't see you dipping in the powder. All righty, so. You need to put a little flour on your wax paper and some on your rolling pin. My mother-in-law gave me this rolling pin when my husband and I got married. It's been great. It's been almost 43 years ago. All right, friends, you just grab one of these little patties and you start to roll them out. It's nice and firm. It turned out really good. The best thing to do is during the summer when it's hot outside, go ahead and make you a bunch for your kids classes for uh, party favors or Christmas parties or just as gifts or keepsakes. 
but they dry really fast outside in the summer. This is one of my favorite. I've had that cookie cutter for a while. It's been well used. All right, I think that fits. Just press it in there. Look at that, friends. Perfect. And the reason I'm using this parch parchment paper is because um, you don't want the lines to show up in the back of it, the lines of your cooling rack. Now, I used to put my uh, ornament hook in it before it dried, but you know what, friends? In this area where I live at now, they get rusty before I even get a chance to paint them. So uh, I think I'm just going to glue them on there from now on. Okay. Another favorite of mine is an angel ornament. I don't know if this is big enough for it. And also gingerbread. My gingerbread boy. Oh, this might have been too too thick. I don't ever worry about the thickness. I mean, for some reason, you can't go wrong. It always, it always works for me. Might have gotten this one too thick, though. Perfect. There you go. And if it's a little rough around the edges, just kind of smooth it out. Normally I have a little tool that um, I use, but I didn't plan ahead. I don't have it here with me. Okay, to the drying rack. Friends, you need to take advantage of the heat outside. If you make these in the morning and you set them outside, um, check on them after a few hours, flip them over, uh, and then flip them back over again. You know, give them 24 hours to dry. Bring them inside. Don't leave them outside, you know, overnight. But give them 24 hours to dry, and uh, then you're ready to go on to the next step, like I am. I've already got some ready that I made yesterday. So let's go on to the next step. Okay, friends. Our ornaments are ready to be painted. They've dried and we are ready for the next step. Things that you're going to need are as follows. Your dough ornaments, your acrylic paints, your slick paints, paint brushes, a plate, water and napkins, a Sharpie, ornament hooks, and a glue gun, Maj Podge, and a brush. I'm going to start on the Santa first. And um, I'm going to start with the white paint. And friends, someone asked me why I didn't sit down to craft. Um, and I have to be honest with you, I've never been able to craft sitting down. Uh, so I'm standing up and I'm very comfortable. So don't worry, it'll be okay. Let me see if I can do this upside down though. You're gonna need to give this two coats of each color. Let your uh, brush guide you. It kind of just, it guides you to the very edge. You don't have to worry about going over. Just... Okay. 
You cannot go wrong because you're going to seal the edges with your slick paint. So don't be scared, just be creative. Friends, I've been gone on vacation and um, our kitchen cabinets were painted right before we left and so is our filming area. So we're not really sure how it's going to work out yet, but we're going to work with it. Okay. Paint anything white first. Okay. That's what I always do on this little angel. I'm just going to brush over the wings that are white. These are so much fun to decorate. And like I said, they don't have to be perfect because the end result comes after you put your uh, slick, uh, slick paint and outline your project. Do y'all like my little snowflake looking flower on my cheek here? Eric just kind of threw some flower at me. And, and it looks like a little snowflake. I love it. It was, it was for visual enhancements. <laughs> little stinker. I think he enjoyed it. A little bit. <laughs> okay, friends. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go with the peach. Let me see if I can open this. I'm trying to hurry so that it won't take too long. Do her little hands. This is a cute little angel ornament. What's so neat about these is the fact that you can uh, personalize them. You can put person's name, the family name, and I'll show you in a little bit how easy that can be done. Your favorite putting the year? And the year, yes. I used to make this, these ornaments for my kids' Christmas parties at school. And I also give them away as gifts. And I always had some for my nieces and nephews when we had our family Christmas party. And see, I chose these two because it's going to show you a little bit of... Uh, how to do the detail that's already imprinted on there. It's very, very easy, very, very simple. You cannot go wrong. Okay, now, try to do the red last and the black. So now I'm gonna do her hair. You can do uh, brown, black, whatever color hair you need to do. I'm going to show you how you highlight it in just a minute. Now this looks kind of yellowy right now, but it'll be okay. Trust me. Looking a little mustard headed. <laughs> Uh, kind of reminds me of the old uh, Dick and Jane books. Uh, Jane's hair was always a bright yellow. Of course, I don't know if you 
ever saw any of those books. I saw the movie. <laughs> was her hair mustard yellow? Uh, I mean, it was blonde. She was blonde for sure. And friends, when I'm painting Christmas ornaments, I love to use the Deco Art Americana in the true red. I think that is the prettiest Christmas red out of all the red paints I've used in the past. And I'm almost out of it. Oh no, surely not. Well, we may just have to do one. You really don't plan these out very well. <laughs> ah, it's because I have a backup plan. <laughs> backup plan. Okay, this red just goes on so smooth and pretty. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect because your outline is going to take care of any imperfections. And if you made it, you made it with love. So, good God. You can't go wrong. This is very true. I, I'm a huge appreciation person when it comes to uh, homemade gifts. Oh, I love giving homemade gifts. In fact, um... I love making those um, those photo coasters. I like to surprise my friends, my YouTube friends, and um, send you a coaster when you least expect. All right. My my deal is that like you know somebody is spending their time. You know, yes. what's, what's, what's your time worth? That's more than going and buying something off the shelf. Exactly. Plus, a lot of times, uh, you can make a beautiful gift in an inexpensive way. Like, for example, this recipe makes a bunch of ornaments. And most of you have a bunch of these paints in your craft stash already. So let's put them to good use. I couldn't find, I'm, I painted some earlier this summer that I'm going to donate to my uh, fall church fall festival. They're so cute. I made some different angels. Really, really cute. Could I find them? No, I hope I find them between now and fall. But they're really, really cute. And I made some cute snowmen. If I find them between now and the next video, I'll show them to you. Came out so cute. And I made them with love to donate to the church ladies for their fall festival. Looks like you have enough red to finish that, Angel. Oh, yeah. And sometimes I'll just open the lid. Folks, you just... So you're using the same brush over and over here? Yes, I like this one. This is a... This came in a little packet from, I think from Walmart. I have some expensive brushes, but they've been beat up over the years. And I've had to invest in some, some inexpensive ones and they're not as good, let me tell you. <laughs> but they get the job done, so. The whole secret to keeping a, a brush in good shape is just don't drop it and let, like a pointed one like this, don't let it sit in the water at the bottom of the cup because then it's never going to be pointy again. It's going to be flared. Okay, that's base coated. Oh, you know what? I forgot the top of her head over here. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> oh my gosh, friends. 
being on vacation and trying to get back into the swing of things. Oh my gosh. But I have been busy. I've been crafting for you to show you some fun crafts that I have coming up. All right, let's see if we can make it. I bet we can make it. I love this red. Like I said, it's thick. It covers really well. See, I love this pointed tip brush because it gets into all the little pointy areas. Does that sound right? Pointy areas. Oh, you know what I'm talking about uh, right here. Trying to stretch it here. I know they don't look like much right now, but gosh, when you put the detail on them, they look so pretty. Okay. Those need to dry because they'll need another coat. Because I, you need to do, to put two coats of paint on them. Because of the salt, I think it absorbs the, the bright color. So you definitely do need a second coat. Lucky for you guys, I already have two ready. And I want to show you how quick you can detail them. All right, this is a little dry brush with a, a round end. And this is a ceramic brush that I've had forever and ever. I used to paint ceramics a long time ago. All right. This is the way I put the cheek detail on here. Let's see if I can do it upside down. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Look at that, friends. That's so cute and so quick. Oh, forgot his mouth. The brush does the work for you. Now the little girl, angel girl, she needs some rosy cheeks. All right, now this can stay in the water because it's a stiffy brush and because we're filming, I'm just going to let it stand in there. It's just these soft ones that you don't want to leave in the water. All right, let's see next for her detail. Uh, I've got to use her nose. I've got to use this for her nose. It's got an imprint, a little imprint in there. All you do is you put your slick bottle up to it and fill it in, friends. That easy. Same thing with the Santa, but we'll do that last. Um, let me see what else. Let me finish her off since I want to show you how you can soften that hair up. I'm taking some burnt umber. 
I'm dipping another dry brush. Same kind of dry brush that I used on the cheeks. Now we'll give her some dirty blonde hair. How about that? There you go. Just to soften that up a little bit. Her little part there. It's going to be too cute. All right. Let's go ahead and get her angel wings done. I'm going to try to look at this one. Can you see, Eric, mm -hmm. what I'm doing? Straight out of the bottle, friends. Get her halo done. All right. And now, okay, I haven't painted eyelashes in a while there on these, but I think I can do it. Where's the black? I think I can do it upside down. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, okay, friends. Let's see. There's an imprint for the eye. Oh, not very good. Now I stuck my hand in there. I better turn it around. I'm making a little mess out of it, but I will fix that. Oh, she's got scary eyelashes. Okay. These turned out better. Oh, it's going to be so cute. I need a finer. a finer uh, liner brush because that got a little too wide. But let me tell you how you fix it. If you get the eyelashes too wide and they look kind of scary, go back to your peach color. Oh, here's some. Tone it down some. There you go. It'll be all right. Has to be. Oh, let's see. Now, this is the white. I guess I better fix her halo first. I should have done that last, but it's been a while since I've done these. 
I always try to test my paint because sometimes it'll spit and spat and splat, sputter. Spatter. <laughs> Spatter. <laughs> you know what I meant. Okay, now the white. A little bubble right there. And that's going to happen. Don't let that scare you. It's not going to ruin your project. It's still going to look so cute. Okay, other than the little detail, only because I want to add a little holly berry here at the bottom. Three dots right out of the little bottle. And came out kind of wild here out of the bottle. And just make a little leaf. Alrighty. This little angel is done. It's ready to go outside and be put out in the sun. They dry real quick when you do that. All right, Santa here. Let's start with the white on top. Mainly he takes all white. You know what? I'm going to personalize it first because I'm going to show you something. I have a YouTube friend that lives here in Arlington. She's got a YouTube channel called the Moreno Fam. And I'm going to personalize this for her. All right, friends, I've got to share something with you. If you personalize it, any of your ornaments, you have got to seal it. Okay, friends, sorry about that. Our battery died on our camera. Okay, let's continue. We're almost done. All right, let's go ahead and make sure it doesn't Bit on me here. Let's see. Air bubble. Nope. I'm going to outline his lip there and see where uh, this area is already done for us in a way. You just have to fill it in straight out of the slick bottle. Okay. Let's see. Oh, let's do the eyes next. Black. And it's already got the eyes marked for you. All you have to do is grab your slick bottle. You're assuming they're using the same stencil as you, Emma. No, this is the cookie cutter. I know, but I'm just saying that if you have, <laughs> if you're using the same cookie cutter, okay? The one that you've had for 30 years? Sorta. Kinda. No, I don't, I don't think I've had this one for 30 some odd years. I don't even remember where I got this one. 
oh, you know what? It was a Hallmark special one year, I think. Um, all right, let's add every Santa needs eyebrows. And a little dot there, dot there, another eyebrow here. Okay, let me see if I can start with this right here. Yeah, my friend Keisha with the Moreno family fam has a channel and she does all kinds of um, hauls. And she does vlogs. She's a young mom with some babies, and she's just precious. And one day, by accident, I found out that she lives in this area. So I was real happy about that. You know, I never stopped to think about that, Eric, uh, that not everyone has the same cookie cutter. I should have just done a gingerbread boy or girl. Too late now. <laughs> I'll be bringing that up at the end of this video. <laughs> well, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I'm still on vacation mode, but still I wanted to show you how easy it is to um, detail these. I mean, it'll work on any other cookie um, that you want to decorate that has imprints on it. So um, let's, all right, friends, here we go. I'm going to do this upside down. Hope it works. Like I said, you really can't go wrong. These are so much fun to decorate. Normally, friends, I have my Christmas music going. But for copyright purposes. But for cop. <laughs> but for say it Eric for copyright purposes I'm not listening to it right now while I'm videoing or taping or filming good god I can't even talk today oh this is looking so cute 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 I'm making it with love for my little friend and I have some other friends that I'm going to be making some for your kiddos too and I'll probably show those later because I want you to get a general idea of what all you can do using the same method of uh, the cookie dough recipe By golly, I think we are done. Look at that. Friends, what do you think? Is that not cute? Tell them what you do to finish it off now. Oh, okay. To finish it off, I'm not going to do that on camera right now, but, I ha but let me tell you what I do. I use the same method that you can go back and see my video on the DIY um, photo coasters that I make. I use the resin, I mix the two parts, and uh, I shellac them with that resin. Is that, good? Is that okay to say that I use shellac them? No, you just put the resin on there. Yeah, you apply resin to it. Thank you. You apply resin to it and let them dry overnight. And 
Look, the reason I do that is because it gives it this ceramic finish, glass-like finish, and they last forever. Now, you can also use, because I've used it before, triple, not triple sec, that's for, that's for mixed drinks, right? Yeah, Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> Friends, it's been a long day. It's called triple thick, excuse me, correction, triple thick, and you can get it at Hobby Lobby or Michael's, and you can apply a couple of coats on there and it'll work. It'll work real well, it'll preserve it. Um, the only thing that I've found with it is sometimes the white turns yellow. That's why, after a, several years, that's why I always use the resin. But um, also, you can use the Mod Podge or you can use uh, clear spray paint. All right? I hope I don't get in trouble. <laughs> okay, friends. This one is completely dry. Look how pretty they look. And it's not even finished. I mean, it's not even um, shellacked yet. But this is what they look like when they dry. I painted this one earlier today and I put it out in the sun. And uh, man, it dried within like 30 minutes. So anyway, these can be personalized. And like I said, just be sure and seal them. Oh, I'm so pleased with the way this one turned out. Friends, what do you think? All right, friends, I just want to tell you that I invested in something that's going to help me cut foam out, and I'll share that with you next video. Meanwhile, I wanted to show you what I've been working on. Look at these, friends. I've got a quick and easy way for you to paint these little rounds and make them into peppermints. And look at this. Look at this candy. Wait, I had a green one, a green peppermint. Where is it? Santa, shame on you. Look at that. Look, friends, how cute they're gonna look on my gingerbread Christmas tree. I can hardly wait. And that's not all. Remember the tool I told you I invested in? I'll share with you next time. Oh my gosh, OMG, look at this sweet gal. I'm gonna be making one of these with you later on. Okay, friends, thanks for joining me. It's been wild, I know, but uh, like I said, we're getting ready to film some more Christmas videos and Halloween, so, um, Bear with me and stay tuned. Meanwhile, love you friends. Uh, stay tuned for my next video.